This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 658 for June 1st, 2020. Get ready, tenos. Slide, slide, jump, jump, dash, dash, slash, slash, slide, die, slide, slide, jump, jump, ground pound. Operator, the system is in need of you. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston. Joining me as always is Moonpeer. Hello. And the Nip. Hello. A brand new episode of Old Dog New Flicks is out right now for the public feed. It's uh, Star Girl, if I remember correctly. Um, Star Girl is a DC <laughs> TV show, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's just also a DC TV show. I started to watch. But, um, also on the Patreon feed is the final for now at least uh episode of old dog new flicks uh i, I believe you wrote fi- final for the foreseeable future uh, mm-hmm. which is a, a lot of good alliteration um but that uh, sort of like uh, uh the bonnie moon pier boston rebirth it's kind of run its course you know uh, series have to end at some point uh it's yeah, gonna some things have happened taken a step back from a while you yeah know. we'll see it may come back it may not who knows like yeah we'll see how things go there will be obviously be, be, be behind the scenes discussions, um, both in regards to that and other things which may or may not be in the works. Um, right. But we'll sort that out as we go. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, at the very least, right now, uh, Critical Misses is uh, going on. We're, we're mm-hmm. knee deep in season one. Uh, for recording right now, we just finished episode seven for Furious Seven. Uh, episode two just came out for Too Fast, Too Furious for patrons. Uh, if you're not a patron, patreon.com slash E1M1, the ones are numbers. So you get two month early access for that at only the $2 level. But remember, the $5 level gets you everything. Uh, and, uh, Critical Misses is just a, a blast. Um, we are having a, a heck of a lot of fun watching these movies and talking about them and i hope you guys are having fun uh listening to them because it's uh it's great we also have um, we rogue like it over there which is we just recorded episode 82 of that which is just <laughs> so many episodes uh of that show and it is uh is continuing to be we're we're playing a much better game than we've played recently which is a breath of fresh air right now yep um and uh don't forget this month's game club game is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Spoiler alert, yes. I'll talk about that a little bit shortly. Yeah, which uh, that's that's been clipping along. And uh, we do the outcast every week, the uncensored stuff before we go live on the air. Um, la- last couple of weeks have been like an hour long worth of stuff. Uh, and then mm-hmm. we recorded uh, like 25 minutes here <laughs> already today. So uh, a lot of great stuff. Patreon.com slash E1M1. Uh, if you can become a patron... Well, that's great. We uh, we definitely appreciate it. We uh, we we really value all of you patrons. If you can't right now, totally understand. Money's tight. I I get it. it yeah. Everything's cool. This show continues to be free every week, uh, video and audio. So uh, at the very least, you got that. And everything on Patreon except for Outcast comes to the the public feed at some point. So uh, if you don't get the cash, you got the time. So it'll show up there eventually. If I'm um, playing a video game, you'll get there eventually. That's right. That's right. Or like me watching Arrowverse. I'll get there sometime in the next 15 years. Yeah. 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 It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Go listen to the outcast. Um, all right. Moon, what have you been playing this past week? Uh, so I will actually start with Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Um, okay. Just a quick putting put this, this off in passing. Um, pretty much because... Uh, as Nymph can witness, witness me, witness me. <laughs> um, this game goes places I was not expecting it to go. Okay. And in a game about vampires, I did not expect it to go as dark as it went. Ah, uh, okay. I was. I've never seen a frame of this, for the record. I've heard it talked about a lot. I've I know that it's a legendary game among fans. You've um, seen some of the probably some of the characters because like the, the the I've seen the cheerleader the vampire from the, the cover. 
Yeah, like the woman with the pigtails, like that. That's yes. like the, the character they always show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, the subject of how things went real dark, real quick. Okay, interesting. Uh, um. So yeah, I've been playing that on stream, mm-hmm. and yeah, my new keyboard seems to work fine. Thanks everybody for asking. It seems to be good. It managed <laughs> to last a two-hour stream with zero latency. I'm really happy, and I have a Great. DPI button, which means I can increase and decrease my speed at will. There you um, go. Yeah. It made me uncomfortable. Physically okay. uncomfortable while playing the game. That's and impressive. Without without talking about the context of what was said and what was discussed for fear of spoilers, I'm sure Nimp will agree with me that that took a turn and went real south real fast. <laughs> yeah. We kind of discussed it a little bit in the stream of when you do anything with vampires, you expect it to go somewhat dark and... Mm-hmm. That turned way more into darkness than either one of us were expecting. <laughs> so, oh, mm-hmm. wow. <laughs> so which isn't a bad play thing this for in me. Front of your kids, yeah. yeah. It's not. Don't get me wrong. It's it's a subject matter that I did not expect to get brought up. Okay. It's an issue that I didn't expect to get brought up, and it's handled really, really, really well. Interesting. So, full credit to them for that. <laughs> and the swerve <laughs> moment was fantastic. I'm laughing because I started playing that this week. I don't want to talk too much about it because we'll we'll talk about our we'll, full thoughts we'll, in the Game Club recap episode. Yeah, we'll deep dive. It's, it starts off with probably one of the funniest, unintentionally funniest scenes in this game. Like, you get turned into a vampire. They have, like, these, these close-ups of, like, the blood dripping down your neck. And then, like, three dudes busted in the room and just, like, pomp, pomp, just hit you with stakes, and then the screen goes to black. It's like, what the hell just <laughs> happened? This is incredible. Yep. Yep. 2004. And then Bender's there to greet you, which is Yeah, and great. then Bender's like, yeah, 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 I'm a vampire. <laughs> yes. So this character's really good. <laughs> I'm shocked that that game did what it did to me. I'm genuinely yeah. shocked. Like, Nim can, Nim can attest, like, I didn't want to continue the conversation. I didn't want to choose specific conversation options because I didn't want to know more. Like, mm. it... Good on you, game, from that long ago. And thank you for proving why you might actually be a, a timeless classic in the eyes of its fans and why you have a fan patch. Um, yeah. Flip side of it, Alpha Protocol all over this. Uh, as <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as Nimp so correctly pointed out, I am not skilled in handguns, and I think to steal your your phrasing here, Nimp, my reticle for shooting was about as wide as a sliding sliding glass door. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm putting, I'm aiming at someone's head with the crosshair, the middle one, obviously not the full circle version, basically. Right, uh, and I think it took me about thirteen rounds to kill him, and I hit him three times. Great. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I do. So. I do have to say, starting the game and sort of seeing what it is, because I feel like I feel like this is one of those classic games where you hear so much about it and how much people love it, but you don't hear about what the heck the thing actually is. Like what? Yeah. What? How do I play? What is Firewatch? You know, you don't you don't actually hear how to <laughs> go play. away from me with what is Firewatch. <laughs> um. But playing it, even after like the first hour, my immediate thought was, I really need to watch some stuff about the sequel, because man, if I can play like a modern version of this on a console, I'm 100% in for that, because this, boy, people were right, this seems like a game I would really enjoy. <laughs> uh-huh. Shocker. Uh, this is, this is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the one reason I'm really glad Microsoft did their gameplay video trailer thing. Because mm-hmm. it was watching that, specifically the trailer for the sequel, that got me interested right before we had the conversation about should we choose a game for a game club. Right. And I was like, oh, I want to play Vampire 2. Not Vampire 2. Vampire the Masquerade right. 2. Sadly, Vampire 2 has not yet been announced. Exactly. Um, they've hinted that they're going to do a sequel, but nothing yeah. solid yet. There we um, go. But I was like, why not play it? And I'm now really glad that we did because... yeah. Yo, go play this game. I'm... Hey, this game seems good. <laughs> yes, genuinely great. 16 years later, we're saying, hey, this game is good. Yeah. It is the Ars Arcanum of first-person vampire games. There you go. 
That's a deep cut for anybody mm -hmm. who likes their PC RPGs. I like it. Um, let's see. I played a little bit of Apex Legends. Uh, new event, new week, blah, blah, blah. Battle pass, shooty, shooty, die, die. You know, the Apex down Legends hills. stuff. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm messing around with different characters. Finally got to play Loba for the first time. She's the new character. Oh, cool. Interesting, but I will have to work on her to get better at her weird bangly teleport thing. Because oh, okay. She teleports, but the way she does it is she throws her bracelet. Oh, okay. Interesting. It makes sense, kind of. Sure. <laughs> but whatever. Um, she's pretty good um, to just futz around with at the moment. Like I said, I'm, I'm just playing it for poops and giggles. Like, a couple of rounds a day, if that. Get my treasure pack, get a couple of dailies done, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Clock in, clock out. <laughs> yes. Um, did not do Dead by Friday this weekend. Oh, no. I had to skip it because by the time anybody was really online and aware, it was 11 p.m. and I had to wake up the next day for work. Right. So I basically had my Xbox on idle for a while and then just had to go to bed because yay for working on a Saturday. Yeah. Fun. But yes, we'll don't don't you worry. We will make up a Dead by Friday another day and over and over and over again. Um, I I, I might have done something really stupid, guys. <laughs> Okay, you're amongst friends. You, you, it's you're safe here. W what have mm, you done? Mm, no, when it comes to this particular thing, I'm not amongst friends here. Oh no, which means I'm not talking about Elite Dangerous because then I will be amongst our friend. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did you get into in wrestling? order to? No, no. <laughs> I'm always into wrestling. I did buy another T-shirt though, but that's a different. That's a different topic entirely. <laughs> You'll see that on the show at some point. Okay. Uh, no. To be amongst friends in regards to this, I'll have to wait another two weeks and a Saturday to be amongst friends for this. Okay, now I'm really confused, okay. Is it two weeks and a Saturday? Yeah, no, wait, yeah, mm -hmm. three weeks and a Saturday? Three weeks and a Saturday. Three weeks and a Saturday. What do I do the third Saturday of every month, Boston? Game Club. Uh, who else is at Game Club, Boston? Uh, Musum. Uh, what does Musum play, Boston? Uh... Oh, no. There we go. The penny dropped. <laughs> did you start Warframe again? Yeah, I totally, I totally updated Warframe. Moonfear? What I'm are you doing? afraid to see how big the download file is for that now. <laughs> well, it wasn't big because I already had it installed. I just needed to click A and update it. That, ma that makes sense. <laughs> that <And> that <laughs> tracks. <laughs> um, you know, Microsoft part of their game pass ultimate things is they give perks out and one of the perks is a warframe pre prime skin and i had to Ooh. claim it before like 625 so i might as well hit a and update it i might as well just log in and see how it whoops i played 18 hours no so i played a little bit not a lot a little bit only a little okay. bit and then i realized that right now i recently purchased a game for 40 dollars because it looked like dumb fun we'll get onto that one in a second okay and then i realized if i'm looking for a mindless game that i don't have to think about and i can just smash some stuff and take out my rage destiny 2 oh wait <laughs> i have warframe right so i'm i may or may not be slipping sliding jumping triple jumping and then samurai sorting through the air my way into that rabbit hole yeah. real soon warframe is really good it's so good. Warframe is really good. <laughs> really good, dude. How many uh, uh, tutorials did you have to read through before you started finally getting a grasp on what's going on now? Uh, I may or may not have skipped all the tutorials and just ran around hitting things with a big ma a big mace thing. I, I respect it. I like it. I, I know what I've got to do, kind of. I've got to level up my maces to level 30 and then change mm -hmm. weapon to a different weapon and then level that up to 30. And I just hit on whatever's got an exclamation point on the mission screen and then go try and do that. What's I like your, it. Uh, what's your mastery level at? I think at the moment, like, if we're talking, like, individual weapons, I've got a no, whole no, no, bunch no. of your, um, On your, my overall mastery, yeah. I think I'm at, like, six, maybe seven. Oh, you got to get those numbers up, man. I know, I Them's played a lot of numbers. <laughs> I know, I'm aware. Warframe's only for closers. Yes. I think last time I was in it, I was Mastery 25, 26. Jeez. But the last time I had played it was when they did that big update where they had the open field area the that you could go stuff. into. 
And that oh, was yeah. the last time I had played that. God, that looked cool. It was yeah. cool. And the big thing that you have to fight in there sucked. <laughs> and there's so much more in it now. And I need another games as a service game, I guess. Of course you do. <laughs> Does it have a I season do. pass now? I I haven't seen any pop ups for season passes. I don't okay. think they've gone. I don't down think that it does yet. Uh, so yet. I think it has yeah. fishing in the game now too. Oh it does. no! I have seen yeah. that they've like started doing a whole bunch of additional stuff like that. Oh no! Yeah. So get ready, tenos, because <laughs> this idiot made a mistake. Get ready, tenos. <laughs> oh god! I'm sorry. I don't know what I do to myself. I'm so stupid. Oh, man. Uh, you know what? Forget all of the games. I'm just going to uninstall everything, and I'm just going to have three games installed. Dead by Daylight. Well, five games. Dead by Daylight, Apex Legends, Rainbow Six Siege, just to annoy my wife, um, <laughs> Warframe, and did I say Elite Dangerous yet? No, not yet. The Division 2. <laughs> Elite Dangerous Dead. That's my five games. That's all I need. So when I, like... I get my Series X, I know what to install onto that hard drive. Can I tell you, I love that you're playing like five um, like games as a service games, none of them are like the three that I play. <laughs> yeah, and they're all vastly different too, for the most part. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, it's so good. I hate games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, oh, I didn't even write like... this down because I was so surprised. Warframe. <laughs> uh, my final game this week is Manita, uh, which uh. Uh, I I. Uh, I, I was about maybe five hours away from the end of the game when uh, we talked last week, and now I have beaten the game. I have every single achievement in the game, and I realized that the narrator of the game is Cyril Figus. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good choice for a narrator. Yes. And you know what? 40 bucks, well worth it. it yeah. It's dumb. It was like 15 hours tops. I... I jumped out of the water i nommed on people i stole people off floaty paddle boats it was great like i just had fun medralizing the sea as yeah. a shark with electric teeth <laughs> at, don't ask at, Think, i just I, res made. I respect a game that it comes up with this idea it comes up with this this overall concept and just kind of leans all the way into it where it's like all right, we're going to kind of make an open world shark RPG. And mm -hmm. then as we were playing it and making it, it just got real dumb and we really leaned into it. And now it's fun dumb. Dude, they have like location based collectibles where it's like, oh, here is a, like a, a landmark that you can go and see. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, inside it, like you hop, you jump out of this ocean, hop across a golf course and into a water trap. <laughs> and there's a landmark there. You collect it and it's a bunch of like... Uh, golf clubs in there and it's just about this landmark about people being angry and throwing the golf clubs in the water that's great and then <clears throat> you do it somewhere else and one of my favorite ones there's three seashells along the side of like a dock and you mm -hmm. go to the landmark and it's like yeah a hundred years from now someone will see an archive of this video uh, be inspired by the three seashells and invent a whole new method of uh, toilet cleansing oh my god <laughs> which is is this, is this the a, first game that has referenced that an amazing <laughs> reference and a oh super my. deep cut oh my god like i don't no know joke. whether i love it or hate it i Maybe both. both it <laughs> yeah it's as soon as I saw them and it started talking about in the future, I was like, are you really going to make this joke? And are they 100% yeah, you... went in for it. And it's read by Cyril Figgis. Okay, I've come back around. I love it. <laughs> it's so good. And they make stupid references all the time. Like, there is a, a sewer with a clown in a grate. And guess what? That's a reference to. Of yeah. course. Yeah. It does them all. It goes from the really obvious ones to literally a three seashells joke. One, one of 2020's one of 2020's biggest surprises is Man Eater, and I really love it. I Man it's... Eater and Streets of Rage Four. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, which is also a Man Eater in a different way. Um, but, hey, oh, you know, it's dumb, it's stupid. Well, it knows exactly what it is, 
and yeah. it embraces that and i'm perfectly happy with that and my favorite thing is it does the split second ending oh great Great. Thank you for watching this season of like whatever our TV show is called. That's so um, good. Maybe there's a lesson to be learned here about, you know, violence begets violence and, you know, let the better heads prevail and so on and so forth. But who knows? I'm just the narrator for a local TV show and we hope we'll see you again next season. That's really good. That's that's the only way you could finish up that, that game. That's really mm -hmm. good. It's really solidly done. And oh, it looks gorgeous. It does really good with the underwater stuff. And let me tell you, when a sperm whale attacks you, you get scared. Mm, because bet. they're huge. Um, yeah. But yeah, Man Eater is, is dumb. It's fun. It's stupid. I love it. And if you got 40 bucks to spare, it doesn't matter if you haven't. That's fine. I get it. Things are complicated right now. And you want something to literally just take your mind off everything. Mm -hmm. Maybe give it a go. Become a shark. Yes. Become one yeah. with the water yeah. and eat all of that crap at the bottom. That's right. Did you find the but trash yeah. statue? Oh, dude, I found everything, dude. I have 1,000 points at this game. Yeah. Man. And there's so also the, the hobo twig statue. Um, <laughs> it, it just drops some really nice references. Three yeah. seashells. I mean, come on. Three seashells. It's so dumb. It's like, of course. Why not? Uh, but yes, that is all I have been playing, Mr. <clears throat> Nimp. All right. I've had a weird week this week of games that I've played. Um, oh, no. <laughs> so I jumped way back into Bloodborne. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and promptly got my butt handed back to me because it had been a while <laughs> since I had played Bloodborne. And I knew it was going to be right. rough going. <laughs> but I was like, screw it, whatever. I will figure this game out again because now that I'm used to playing Code Vein, which is a completely different style than what I was playing Bloodborne, I have to get back into how I need to play this game. All right. There, since I had beaten the last boss, I don't remember which one it was, new enemies have appeared in this game. And they, I guess like the group outside of the game, everyone who loves this game, call them bagmen or abductors. And they are these uh -huh. tall things, and they have these, like, mesh bags on their back. They look like potato sacks that you can put a body into. And, uh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I see where this is going. Yes. So, those just start showing up in random areas where other enemies used to be. And mm. they... The one area I had found them in, I was already fighting these tall guys in the church ward... And so when I saw this guy in the shadow, I was like, okay, it's the same guy. So I went in, started attacking, and realized that I wasn't doing a whole lot of damage. And then this thing kind of turned around on me, and I was like, oh, no. Something is going to happen, and it's not going to be great. And it wasn't, because these guys hit like a freaking truck. <laughs> one one hit from this guy almost took me out. Oh, and wow. I think I got him down, I don't know, not a whole lot, nothing... <laughs> Nothing worth mentioning, and then he killed me. But I didn't get a you die screen. I okay. got a short oh, was little... this the DLC. No, is this how you go to the I DLC? <laughs> I don't think this is DLC. It might be. I don't know. Um, I think these are just normally in the game. I don't think they are DLC. But uh, you get a shortcut scene, and then you are taken to a dark jail cell. And then you're just left to figure out where you're at. And there's oh, no wow. lantern or anything. <clears throat> so you're kind of wandering around in this really dark area with all these very powerful enemies roaming around, trying to figure out where you are, how to get back, and where are my soul echoes at. So... Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, because you still lose those because I did technically die. So I found the guy who killed me and he killed me again. So I lost those. Like, screw it, whatever. I'm just going to try to find a way out of here because I am not meant to be here just yet. Finally found a lantern, was able to get back into the dream. Um, that way I can, you know, it's basically your hub for this game. It's the <clears throat> dream hub. Mm -hmm. Got back there and I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm mad enough that I can't do anything to these guys. I'm just going to keep ramming my head up against them until I figure out their patterns, until I can beat them. And I did. And for three hours, I did nothing but fight one of these things. <laughs> Just farming them. Yeah. Um, finally beat one. They drop 
they drop some components that you can upgrade your equipment with. Um, there's blood. Well, I actually wrote it down. What are they? It's a uh, blood something bloodstone shards, and they also drop twin bloodstone shards, which you can use to upgrade your weapons. Mm-hmm. At this point, after grinding, I also accidentally found the Kirk hammer. Okay. Ah, which is ah, a really is awesome a trick weapon. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, a name that, that rings one. a bell. So this right. weapon is technically two weapons. You have a, I think it's a, sh- it's either a short sword or a long sword. And when you trick it, you basically put the sword in its sheath and then you use the sheath as a weapon. And at the end of the sheath is this massive iron block that is a hammer. And it does. <laughs> crap tons of damage and it also drains your stamina <laughs> really fast uh, uh-huh yeah so on top of being able to finally upgrade this thing now these bag men also drop about a thousand souls each time you kill them which is a lot for that point in time so i was able to upgrade the kirk hammer up to plus six <clears throat> and i was able to upgrade my character so I went from halfening to spend like a half hour fighting one of these things to within about 10 hits, I can take one of them down. Oh, wow. But I still had to be careful because they hit like a truck. So it only took two hits for them to take me out. I then found an area in here where it's a stairwell that they can't walk down because they're too tall. Aha. So they get uh, stuck the on this. Dark souls. Yeah, so they get stuck <laughs> yeah. on this one spot and they can't come down anymore. So then I started cheesing that. I was like, all right, cool. I feel better about this. I have everything upgraded. I've upgraded my character quite a bit. I then came across Ludwig's Holy Sword, which is another trick weapon, which is really awesome. And in my opinion, so far, better than the Kirk Hammer. Because it's mm. the same thing where you have a long sword that you start with, you put it in its sheath, and then it turns into a great sword. Oh, wow. And it does holy radiant damage, which in my Ooh. opinion, everything in this game should be taking holy damage because this is some <laughs> very unholy stuff you're fighting. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I started build. I didn't really... I wasn't really specking my character to a, a particular way because I wasn't really sure how I wanted to play the game. But since I've gotten a hold of Ludwig's sword, I'm like, all right, I'm going to do a quality build, which is basically you put your points into strength and skill. That way you – because it does uh, scaling based on those two skills. So I have those up to the soft cap of 25, so it's doing about max damage right now. And I started putting more into health and endurance. That way I can actually move around and kill things and take a couple hits without dying. And then the game got a lot easier. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I've taken out, I managed to take out the Witch of Hemwick, which then gave me the ability to get the Ruin Workshop tool, which lets Mm. me add ruins to my character so now I have all these extra things that, like, I can hold extra blood vials so I can heal myself. Um, I get extra souls now. Um, and there was something else that I added. I forgot what it was. But it's just, like, extra status effects and stuff that you can put on your character. Mm. Um, and since I've been upgrading my weapons, I've got my current sword up to six, which has opened up slots so that I can put blood crystals in there. So that way this thing's starting to do more damage now. So now I have a decent buff going for my sword. And my character. So after I beat the witch, I went and took on the vicar Amelia, which was also a difficult fight. (laughs) Beat her no problem and continued the story. Oh, nice. (laughs) I've made quite a bit, quite a lot of headroom in this, which is. Yeah. It's fun and terrifying at the same time, because I noticed that when I go into new areas, I get real tense. Listen, like I can feel it in my shoulders and my neck. Because yeah. I'm listening for everything. I'm looking for everything. So anytime I go into a new area, it's really slow going because I don't have a shield to just hold out in front of me and just run through everything now. Right. Um, so after beating the Vicar, I've unlocked the Forbidden Woods and I got to the Lantern on that. Called it good for right now. So I'll have to get... I That's not very far into the area, but from what I've been told, the woods is not a great place because there's a lot of traps and random crap in it. Oh, boy. The woods are never a great place in any of these games. Ever. That's yeah, true. It's, I mean, I don't know. I don't have any, like, people hated Blight Town in the first game. I never had any issues with Blight Town in Dark Souls 1. Yeah. But everyone I just hates hate it. Blight Town because of the frame rate. Well, you know, yeah. In the, in the remaster, they fixed that. 
I know because I have the remaster. I still need to go and finish the remaster. Yeah. Uh, yeah which okay. now they have that wonderful thing where I can only match with friends and I can turn off the level cap. So should I need to, I might call on my Xbox friends. I'm looking at anybody out there in the community to drag me through the game again because I need a reason to get back into it. Yeah. Just get into it. <laughs> Just get good. I was, I was <laughs> going to make a joke then that would be inappropriate for the show. There we go. Eventually, I'm thinking I might eventually pick up the remaster too. Mm-hmm. Just the, three, it, the three, the the Xbox One version runs like silk. Yeah, nice. unbelievably good. And I, it's been a while since I've played it. I still remember a lot of the old dumb tricks I used to do for that game to get through. So, oh yeah, the poke somebody, run around the corner, and then watch them lunge at you over the gap and fall to their death. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I actually did that with one of the. So there's uh in an area, there's an, a there's a guy on top of a clock tower with a machine gun who's constantly shooting you as you go through this area. <laughs> I cannot fight this guy because he is super difficult for when you first come across him, so you're not meant to really beat him. But I cheesed the ever-loving whatever out of him because all I did was climb up the ladder, got to the top of the top clock tower, shot him four times, which knocked him off the clock tower, and just let gravity do the work. So <laughs> there you go. Then, then all I had to do was just reload the game so that the items that he drops shows back up at the clock tower, and I got my my souls and the items that he drops. So I'm like, yep. And there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to take what you can take from this game because this game yeah. will take it right back. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Uh, next game I played was uh, Call of Duty. Uh, not a whole lot to really talk about. Just I finished out the Battle Pass. I'm max level yeah, now. Did. Yeah, that took way more, way more time than I wanted it to. Even with the like, I was pretty far along. I got my Tamagotchi watch and all that fun crap. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I keep forgetting to look at it. Apparently, my guy has sunglasses and is bouncing around happy. That's great. <laughs> yeah, don't know how yep. or why because you can't do anything with the watch. So yep, right. don't forget you need to 100 percent check it every time you spawn on shipment. Every time, check out the watch. That's first. right. Don't do anything else. Check the watch. <laughs> That's right. I hate shipments so much. But anyway, so mm-hmm. <laughs> this game there is a mobile version of the game, which is slightly different. And they are doing a thing right now that they were advertising in the game that hey, if you download this and link your account, you get a free watch. All right, screw okay. it. Why not? So I downloaded <clears throat> Call of Duty Mobile onto my phone. Oh, wow. And it's actually fairly competent. The oh, other nice. people playing it are not fairly competent. But <laughs> a question. Uh, how much time have you put in? Because I know for this and the Fortnite game, uh, when the mo- when you first start the mobile game, you just get bots. I was... I got past the tutorial and played like a couple of multiplayer matches just to check it out. It and may still be bots. I'm not too sure. No, these um, are actual people. I could tell. Weed Smoker 420. Well, That's not right. just by the names, by the way they were playing. Because so, all, I'm trying to figure out what I want to talk about now because I got thrown off by your Weed Smoker thing. <laughs> <laughs> So the controls, and I'm holding my phone in my hand to remind myself. So the controls basically work where the whole left side of your screen is your directional movement. You know, forward, Mm. back, left, right, strifing, that stuff. The right side of your screen is you actually aiming your reticles. So you don't have to be held on to, like, the. they've got the virtual analog sticks there, but you don't have to be on top of them. It's just anywhere on the right side of your screen, anywhere on your left side of your screen, you're good to go. Mm. Um. It does automatically fire for you. So if your reticle is pointed at something, it will start firing for you. So you don't have to worry about doing that, which is great because I wouldn't think of a good way besides that to be able to fire while you're trying to aim on a touch screen. Hit the lock screen button. Yeah, exactly. Um, So they do have it where they have more advanced settings so that you can adjust and change everything to however you like it. They do also have buttons on the right hand side for you to be able to throw grenades or call in strikes or, you know, all this other stuff and reloading and all that fun crap that you would normally do in a call of duty game. My thing of it is, is that the people who are playing that game so far are all scrubs because (laughs) we, I played on nuketown and, All the time. I don't know if that's the only map for this or if there are other maps, but Nuketown just happened to be the one that I kept getting. And it 
it feels pretty solid one to one. It run ran pretty fine on my what do I have like an S7 Galaxy S7 or something like that. It's mm-hmm. an older phone, um, but like people were still trying to figure out the controls in the middle of the match. So you've got people looking up at the sky, looking down at the ground, <laughs> people just like twirling around trying to find things. And I'm sitting there killing all these fools, and then I run out of ammo because no one has killed me yet. So then I'm running around with a knife, just stabbing fools. <laughs> and so how does it feel to call eight year old scrubs? Feels real nice, considering <laughs> all the things I hear them good. call the yeah. That's right. Yeah. But yeah, and then we get to the end. Both matches, I was like a thousand points, MVP, mm-hmm. first place. Everyone else is like two hundred. <laughs> yep. You know why? All those other because scrubs. You're clever enough yeah. to play the objective. Yeah, because I tried. Right. But it was just kind of funny watching. It was that whole office. Sp- oh, crap. Was it office space? No. It was the, the office. Yeah, yeah, there was an yeah. episode. The Call yeah. of Duty episode where people are just staring at walls and running into corners and are stuck. Yeah. It was just completely that. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, it's. Go ahead. I was just going to say, my wife might kill me if I don't shout this out on the show. Uh, but she's been playing a lot of Call of Duty this week. Uh, and she actually tweeted about this. And you will get this more than I did because I didn't understand it when she said what it was. Uh, she has been playing Shipment, the yep. 24-7 Shipment yep. rotation that's on right now. Mm-hmm. Purely so she can cycle through guns, <laughs> get a bunch of kills, get a bunch of XP, get new unlocks, and basically try and help that battle pass move along a little bit kind of thing. In the middle of one of these games, she stole somebody's juggernaut. Ooh. So, yeah. That's a... For context on this, Boston, a juggernaut is a 20 kill streak supply Whoa. drop. Is it 20 wow. or 25? I don't know. It probably it way up there. Or. I think it's... Yeah, um, it's... Especially hard. on shipment. Yes. And it turns you into a walking tank with a minigun. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so... She had to capture that clip and was giggling to herself while she was doing it. <laughs> and then also a lot to me when she showed me the clip of her stealing somebody's juggernaut. That's really good. Because how do you steal that on shipment of all maps? How do you get yeah, that like, on shipment of all maps? I have so many questions. I'm wondering if they didn't, because there is, you can call in an ordinance where it drops a care package and it'll mm-hmm. give you a random kill streak. I I've never seen that drop anything higher than just a precision airstrike, which I think is like ten, six to ten kills or something like that in a row. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I I can't help but think they use the kill streak kills count towards the kill streak thing, probably. And then on shipment, you get an airstrike. Oh, there's five kills right there. Oops. Yeah. Oh sure. Shipment. So I did manage to unlock the dragon's breath for my twelve gauge. Mm-hmm. So that's all I've been doing on shipment is just lighting people on fire. I mean, yeah, she, she it really is the most un, it is the most annoying thing to have happen to you. But God, is it so satisfying when you do it to a whole team at once? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so Call of Duty, Call of Duty Mobile, Mobile is it's actually fairly decent. It's not yeah. something I'm not a big mobile. I don't like playing on my phone that much. But I mean, it's it's pretty decent. The controls aren't mm-hmm. bad. If I wanted to get into it, I think it would be pretty fun. So if you want a mobile Call of Duty game, check it out. It yeah. seems pretty competent. It does have its own battle pass. Um, I don't know if it's linked to my to me buying it off of the regular Call of Duty game or not, since I linked my account. Oh, right. So I didn't look into all that fun stuff, but whatever. I'm not too terribly worried about it because I'm probably going to delete it after this. I got my watch. That's all I cared about. Yeah. And the watch is just like this yellow thing that you get that just has like a big M in the back. So oh. it wasn't even anything fancy. It was like, ah, it's free. I'll check it out. Oh, it's yeah. it's the one for mobile scrubs. Yeah. That's what we're going to call it. Mobile scrub watch. <laughs> Last game that I played this week, and I can never say this name right, no matter how many times I try to. Okay. Uduwari Maru. Utawari Ramono? No, see, every... That one? I get, I get in my own head. Prelude to the yeah. Fallen. <laughs> there you go. I played a lot of this game this uh, since it came in. I think it came in Monday. No, Tuesday. It came in Tuesday. Um, <clears throat> I pretty much just set it to auto-read 
had my headphones on and just let it go. Nice. And I still really love the series. I really love the artwork. I really love the music. You get the chance at the very beginning, and you can change it throughout the game, but you can either choose to stick with the original BGM from the mm. for the original game, or you can have it pull from the newer games that came out on the Vita, um, Deception oh, and cool. Truth. Um, so you can go either way. I went with the original music just because I'd never played the original before, so I wanted mm-hmm. to know what that was. But, I mean, it, it sounds really good. Battle system yeah. is still the same from Truth and Deception. They've changed a couple things here and there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I went, what, just short of two hours before I had an actual fight in the game. And then went <laughs> another, what, two, three hours before title screen drop. And now Sounds I'm, right. yeah, and now I'm ten hours into the game and just really loving it. And I'm not even nice. that far into the story ten hours. <laughs> oh man! So it's it's really great. It's I really wish I didn't know that this had a Vita release, and I really wish I had right. also gotten it on the Vita because the original two I would just sit in bed and just let it play, and yeah. then fall asleep to it sometimes. <laughs> so <laughs> a lot like of any good book. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing more of this. They do have a season pass that you can buy right now for $25 that unlocks or basically gives you all the characters from Truth and Deception. Oh, cool. Which is like 15 to 20 characters it gives you. Oh, geez. Yeah, so I'm holding off on that for right now until I at least make it through this one time because mm-hmm. you're going to get about another 15 to 20 characters just with this version of the game. Oh, right. Yeah, because there's there's a lot of characters, but it's really great. I really love it. I'll have more to talk about next time because right now it's just been a lot of reading, which I enjoy. Yeah. The voice acting is really great, too. I think oh, it does. Nice. En- I think it has English and Japanese. I didn't really look into it, but I usually uh, just stick with I Japanese anyway. I can yeah. look that up. You me a boo. Hey. <laughs> That's right. Just saying. <laughs> with the capital W, by the way. I don't have to be amongst friends. No. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much all I've been playing. It was mostly Call of Duty, Prelude to the Fallen, and then some Bloodborne. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I want to give a special shout out to a uh, longtime friend of the show, Brain Eater. Uh, in Animal Crossing, he uh, had really good turnip prices this week, so I made 1.2 million bells uh, while visiting him. Traitor. <laughs> that's right. Because. Uh, <laughs> Neither my wife or I had very good prices this week, so uh, uh, props to him. Uh, both my wife and I are are playing a lot of Animal Crossing now, but it's, it's still Shocker. the same thing. It's yeah. the perfect time for it. 11.3 yeah. million sales in the first three weeks, by the way. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, but uh, it's Animal Crossing. Not a lot new to, to talk about there. Uh, Minecraft Dungeons. Uh, came out this yeah past week. i downloaded this i meant to start it and then i got distracted by pools full of blood yeah i'm i'm a little my only real negative about this game is i'm disappointed that there's no cross save between pc and xbox one mm-hmm. uh uh the developers have said very clearly saves do not go across platforms so that's fine because it came out on switch and ps4 and and all that at the same time um so i started on xbox um you'll be shocked to know that performance on my launch xbox one is less than satisfactory Uh, so i played uh probably about an hour on there and i scooted over and started back over on pc um minecraft dungeons is exactly what you think it is it is a really good starter diablo game that is set in the minecraft universe yeah um the good and sort of bad part about it is that's it <laughs> like there's there is you have a ranged weapon and you have a melee weapon and you have three skill slots that's about it like it's it's about as starter as you can get. Someone was saying there's um I think there's nine stages and I think I finished four of them. Um so it, it the, your first playthrough is going to be a fairly short affair. Um but then there's 
like Diablo 3, there's additional uh, difficulties above that. Um, it's good. I, I mean, I, I, I wish I had more to talk about it, um, but it it is exactly what it appeared to be. Um, and if you have kids, it is a really great game to play. There do- doesn't seem to be any microtransactions or loot boxes or anything. You just you just kind of play it. So that's good. Yeah, give it a shot. It seems great. I have not played it multiplayer. Um, I've only played it single player. Uh, I was expecting my kid to really enjoy this. Uh, she noped out pretty early once spiders started showing up. Apparently <laughs> she doesn't like the blocky Minecraft spiders. Those kind of freaked her out. They are yeah. really creepy, though, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So That's the thing that my daughter has nightmares about as well. She doesn't care yeah. about creepers. It's those stupid spiders. <laughs> yeah, and my kid doesn't really care about spiders in real life. I think just the big, blocky Minecraft ones apparently just did a number on her. Introduce her to Shelob. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but last but not least, the only game I played this week was Two Point Hospital. Yeah, someone... let's talk about this, Mr. I Have a Problem. So, yeah, someone please send help. Um, Should we send so... you to the hospital? <laughs> please don't because i'm just gonna start running it um i that might be an upgrade yeah maybe yeah um i started pushing i was having trouble with let's call it the nhs hospital up in mm-hmm. the, the i like the area. fact that that's the terminology for it now yeah uh i was having trouble with that because for anyone that hasn't played this your normal hospital's you get money based on diagnosing tre- or, or, and treating patients and your vending stuff. So, like, if they play an arcade game, they get a can of pop out of the vending machine, they get some snacks. You'll get money out of, out of all of that stuff from your hospital. The NHS hospitals, you don't get any of that stuff. You get your money based on challenges that the local government gives you um this one is the one i was talking about last week where your quarterly costs are covered based on how many the percentage of people you cure in the previous quarter um was having i failed this really badly the first (laughs) time i played it um and i realized that the second time i did it the real key to it is do every single challenge that comes in. Whenever a challenge comes in, pause the game, do set up the challenge. Usually it's a lot of like training or promoting or stuff like that. Pause the game, do the, the challenge, unpause, go about your day. Because a lot of times, if it's like train three people... Training three people is probably going to cost you $15,000 per person and then $10,000 for the trainer. So it's about $55,000. But you're going to get back from them about $80,000. So you're taking a pretty big hit up front, but in a month or two, it's going to pay off pretty nicely. And that feeds into your quarterly percentages because the more trained your staff is going to be, the better your treatment rate is so the less money you're spending every month so it it's very challenging to get to that first star that that first year or so is pretty rough but once that is taken care of everything is pretty okay um so i cleared that and i thought well let's try the other nhs hospital basically the one from the base game and Oh god. Um this this thing is a nightmare. So it runs it doesn't have that quarterly percentage thing. Um and in between this I'm doing some other hospitals but they're mostly like the hotel in the icy area has a really bad reputation so you have to build up the reputation while you're trying to treat people. It it nothing special though. You're just you're doing serious marketing blitzes all the time. This one, though, it, it's from the base game because I didn't realize the snowy area is one of the expansions. 
and I haven't even gotten to the summer one yet because that's locked off. The game just says, <laughs> hey, by the way, you need to get way more stuff upgraded before you even try this. It's like, okay, that's fine. Um, This one has the local government challenges thing, which is fine. They seem... They feel like they're a little bit harder than the one in the snowy area, but I might have just gotten bad luck on the ones it was giving me. But <laughs> the real monkey wrench on this one is there are pandemic outbreaks that are happening. And oh, wow. the one that you're getting is called, I think it's called the Abominable Plague or something like that. And... There's this giant pop-up that takes up the whole screen that pops up where it's like, all right, this is starting an outbreak. Th this, here's the number of people that are infected. Here's the number of vaccines you have. And here are the symptoms. If you get money back based on how many vaccines you have left over that are unused. So you'll have an outbreak and you'll say like there are five people infected you have 18 vaccines and zero have escaped um and essentially it's like this it essentially thing makes people think that they're like a boris karloff mummy where it's the very stereotypical like stiff legs and the arms out and stuff like that so they're fairly easy to spot but it's very infectious um, so if you don't take care of those five people quickly, you eventually have so many people infected in the hospital that you don't have enough vaccines left over. So it's like the last thing I needed <laughs> on a level that's already really stressful. Um, and the tough part about these hospitals too, is the hospital is largely built already. Um, you, you sort of have all your base level stuff to treat the majority of people that are coming to your hospital. Once you get one star in your hospital and two stars, more uh, diseases start coming through the door that you have to build specific treatment rooms for. But the base level stuff is already set up. I could not tell you how badly I bombed that first <laughs> attempt on that level, and I have not gone back yet since because... In, on this level, when you forcefully fail a challenge, you take a reputation hit. And you need to have an, a certain amount of reputation in that hospital to get from one star to two stars. And there's the snowball that happened where I couldn't meet their needs, so I didn't have enough money to meet the challenges, so then like, it just... 100% got away from me and I've I failed really badly and I haven't gone back to try since I like ran away with my tail between my legs and I haven't been back since um, mostly because I've been focusing on the snowy area I'm on the final level of the snowy area which is Roquefort Manor it is <laughs> most Do I even want to know it's it's rough so a lot of the snowy areas will have like hailstorms or um, avalanches or earthquakes that kind of hurt. They do damage to every machine in your hospital all at once. And if you have enough uh, janitors, it's not that bad. They kind of take care of it normally. Every once in a while, a machine will catch on fire. They'll put it out. They'll repair it. Nothing too serious. This one has that. It also has a new type of treatment uh, that you send them to the reanimator. And it's essentially um, just uh, uh, like horror movie villains. So like Wolfman and uh, uh, sort of villains like that. So that's that's rough. It's another machine that takes up just an incredible amount of space. <laughs> yeah, one. as soon as I researched the X-ray, I was like, "Come on, guys, do we really need to be having this huge of a room?" As soon as it's above I, three I by three, it's a problem. I don't use the X-ray because it's too big and it takes so long. Um, I there's one that I opened up that is five by six, 
Um, <laughs> it's it's massive. I are you going to keep playing this moon? Yes. You okay. can spoil it. I'll forget. It's fine. No, I, I can't spoil it. Number one, because I don't remember what it's called. Um, and number two, it's really, really good. The, as soon as you see the first infected person come through the door, it's one of those ones where you're like, I know what you look like, and I I don't know what is coming down the pipe for me on this one. So I won't spoil that one. Um the Roquefort one, I remember if it's Roquefort Manor Castle. Um, it has ghost infestations. <laughs> so oh, every once in a while, like 15 ghosts will just pop up out of nowhere. Get that job. That's a training going. Uh, yeah, like I, everybody is trained in ghost capture. To make matters worse, <laughs> they it use is... a little like um, like a, a dustbuster vacuum. They do, limp, yeah, and they just run up and like Hoover the thing. Up. Yeah, and just nice. <laughs> it's it's really good. <laughs> and sucking up a ghost gives you research points, which is really <laughs> great. Um, it is by far the largest map I have ever seen. So, for most maps, you start with one central area, and you usually expand to like maybe six other buildings around it. This one has 22. What? 22! No, 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 no. Go away. One of them cost me $200,000 to unlock. Because it was huge. I'm at one star and I'm struggling to get to two. Just because one of my biggest problems is normally when I build a hospital, you have... This one wing that has GP's offices, and then next to it, you have all your diagnostics. And then far away from it, you have your all your treatment, because that's the last place they're going to go before they leave. They have nothing else to do after that. This one, the corridors of this castle are so thin that I have to have, like, multiple GP's offices sectors next to multiple diagnostic places and then on the other side of this giant castle that is honestly too far away people are dying before they get to the treatment rooms because they have to be so far away just to give me the room the the floor space to build these giant like five by six six by six rooms i'm having a really really hard time (laughs) like in a way that yeah like in a way that I'm having a lot of fun still with the game. I mean, it it wouldn't be the only game I'm playing if I wasn't having fun. Um, but man, is this one... I feel like it's a really good capstone challenge for this, uh, this snowy DLC stuff. Because it's like, you're going to take all of this stuff that you've learned and how to deal with all these ghosts and hailstorms and avalanches and stuff and the, the really cold weather. And you're going to deal with all that stuff here. And then you're going to deal with it being in an actual castle and just being the largest space you'll have to play with. Oh, geez. <sighs> Two Point Hospital is really good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, I'm having a real blast. I'm, I'm glad I decided to pick it back up because um, it's one of those games. It reminds me a lot of when I was playing Bullfrog's games, when they're coming out on the PC on the 90s, where it's like, I'm going to pick this game up, and as soon as it grabs me, this is the only game that I have to play until I finish it. Like, it it continues to just kind of keep pulling me in and pulling me in until I until I finish it. And I, I think I'm now at, like, 60% of the trophies. So, like, I'm playing a lot, and I'm just barely halfway done with this game. Yeah. So and it's on Game Pass for PC and Xbox One. So like you want an incredible amount of game here for nothing. You can go do that. Yeah. It it's a it's, really solid game. It's really good. It's it's it, I know Moon and I got really excited about it when they were like, Hey, we worked at Bullfrog and we're just gonna make another theme hospital. And then we Wink. dropped. We're, like we played. Yeah, it we and called it dropped. two point hospital. Wink. Um yeah, and then, like, it came out, and I was just like, I never picked it up on PC because pretty early on they said, hey, we're going to put it on consoles. Like, all right, I'll, I'll wait, and came out with all the DLC and all the, the bug fixes and everything, and oh, God, it's really good. 
<laughs> I mean, it's just it's it reminds me why I like these management games or like God games or city building games or stuff like that. It just they're really great. And when they when the developers get them right, like with the Sims games or with uh, here, Cities XL is really great. And that's the next thing I'll probably play on my PS4 since that just got released on um, uh, PS Plus this month. Um, they just they grab me in just the right way for what feels like a couple of months on end. Yeah. And this game is only 40 bucks. That's great. Uh, it's, go play Two Point Hospital. It's really, even if you haven't played a, a game like this, the first couple of hospitals are really good with the tutorials and, and getting you into it and ramping up the difficulty nicely. So go check it out. Two Point Hospital is really good. And that is all I've been playing this week. So let's take a break. Let's talk releases for the week of June 1st, 2020. Valorant should be available for everyone on PC no, no, this week. No, no, no. Yeah. no. Get I, away from me with that. We already, I don't need a hero <laughs> shooter based on um, Counter-Strike, please. Thank you very much. You already have like four too many live service games right now. Yeah. 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 Uh, Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics comes out on the Switch. Uh, this is the much-anticipated sequel to the 3DS Clubhouse Games, uh, which, until this got announced, I genuinely didn't know that people are nuts about these games. But uh, people really, really love the Clubhouse Games series. Is this the game so. that's got, like, Solitaire and Poker and... Yeah, like ring toss and all those stupid kinds of random stuff. Yeah, yeah, Hanafuda. Like it's it's got fifty one games from across the world and teaches you how to play all of them. It's so every party game you can think of. That's right. It seem it looks really cool. So, uh, a game that I genuinely had no idea was coming out this week: Command and Conquer Remastered Collection comes out on PC. Uh, Question: Does that include the most important Command and Conquer game? I don't think it has a- either of the Red Alert games. Dang it. <laughs> I guessed right. Um I I don't I don't know which ones it has in it, but I I think they recently brought the Red Alert games for I'm not entirely sure cuz this one sort of snuck up on me and I ran out of time before the show started. So they they are coming out with uh remastered games uh, uh there are some in this collection. I'll look them up here in a minute. Okay. Uh, and lastly, The Outer Worlds comes out on Switch. Um, still no video footage of how this runs on Switch. So, as always with <laughs> cross-platform... Yeah, like, as always with cross-platform games like this, you don't have to wait for, like, that digital foundry video to find out, uh, you know, exactly the the if this has ray tracing or whatever. Just... Um, be on the lookout for how smoothly this runs. I'm assuming it's going to have some compromises, either visuals or uh, frame rate. But uh, you know, just just keep an eye out for that one. Uh, maybe don't buy it set on scene. Uh, let's move to news stories. Microsoft announces a bunch of backwards compatibilities improvements on Series X. Let's take these one by one. There, there's surprisingly, there's a lot here. All backwards compatible games will run natively on the Series X hardware, quote, utilizing the full power of the CPU, GPU, and the SSD, end quote. Cool. I'm still going to keep it yeah. installed on my hard drive. I, uh, that thing's well, not big enough. Well, I mean, at, at the very least, then, in that instance, you'll get the CPU and the GPU benefits, even if you don't mm-hmm. get load time benefits. So yep. um, that's great news. Uh, that's also very surprising. I thought they would have just, oh, here's an emulator for the other stuff. Let's bring it over. Select titles will give you the ability to double the game's frame rate from 30 to 60 or 60 to 120. That's pretty impressive. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I'm very excited to see that in person and see how that actually functions. See, that's um, pretty cool, but for, I've never been a frame rate person, so that's fine. Yeah. Whatever. The only time I notice it is racing games. Right. The next one is the one that I heard about a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> and I was like, "They can't. That can't be real." Yeah, so Microsoft has also created an HDR reconstruction technique, that's their term, that allows the Series X to automatically add HDR support to 360 and original Xbox titles, what, with no impact to your performance. What? <laughs> yeah. What? How? What? Huh? What? What dark it's magic just, is in this filter. giant... That's all it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like a Snapchat <laughs> filter. It... <laughs> yeah, they just put a gray filter over it and be like, oh, oh, HDR. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. I mean, I, it, the dark magic I would of like technology, to see this work. You use the right term. Like, the dark magic of technology scares me because you've got yeah. level eight with whatever that does. Mm-hmm. You've got the NVIDIA voice thing with whatever that does. <laughs> AI. <laughs> yeah. And now you've got this. Yeah. I... I I, this would be one of those features that I have a lot of faith in the Xbox team when they come out with new technology like this, where because a lot of them, a lot of the stuff just kind of works. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like original Xbox backwards compatibility, it just it just fires up the Xbox team and it just works. Um, so I feel like they wouldn't be promoting this feature, this technology, if it didn't. If it wasn't that impressive, yeah. If it was kind of just fine, I feel like it, the console would just launch and it would just be a checkbox somewhere, and it would just kind of be okay. I, honestly, um, like this is the stuff I like to hear from them when they talk about the techniques behind it, when they talk yeah. like in a tech form about it. I love that. I hate market and speak. Um, sure, yeah. What is it? <clears throat> Smart delivery is yeah. one of the yeah. most annoying terms I've heard in a long time. Especially yeah. touting it like it's a new thing when, guess what? My Series X or my um, my X already does that. I already right. have smart delivery because when you download a game on your Xbox Boston and when I download a game on my Xbox and when Nip downloads a game on his Xbox, we all have different size packages because we mm-hmm. all use different versions of the Xbox. So smart yeah. delivery <clears throat> isn't new. They just don't need to. They just felt the need now to put a market and bullet point on it. Well, I I think it's really smart of them to do because it, it's I think it's a lot easier to say smart delivery than you buy it on the Xbox One X and then you get a free upgrade to it on the Series X. It's just like this is a smart delivery compatible game has a little sticker on the front of the case and then you're good. You know, yeah, I, I think true. from that standpoint that's good as opposed to you know. I mean, yeah, it, I keep forgetting you need to appeal to the the lowest common denominator. Right, the John Q Street Fighter fan, you know, picking up a game at the store is like, uh, "Will this play on my Series X?" It's like, "Yes, it has the it has a sticker on it. You'll be fine. A patch will come out at some point." And if it still exists at that point, you've also got to give something for the GameStop floor biscuits to reference. Right, right. Um, quick resume will also work with all backwards compatible titles, so you can switch between a number of games uh, as you want. Um, as for how many backwards compatible games would be available at launch, uh, the Microsoft representative said that, quote, thousands of games are already playable on the Xbox Series X today, end quote, so will be somewhere in the region of, quote, a lot. <laughs> so it sounds like it's largely the same technology. So if it works on Xbox One X or the Xbox One at all, it sounds like chances are really good that it's going to run on the Series X, which is exactly how you want it to work, where it's like you don't want to move to the next gen. It's like, oh, yeah, well, 25% of those games don't really, they're not really going to carry over Nintendo. So, you know, you got to wait another little bit before they come available because uh, that's frustrating. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> on the other side of the uh, the coin here, Sony is going to have their first big PS5 games event on June 4th, uh, 2020. Um, Sony has conf- um, uh, said they're going to hold a digital event spotlighting uh, the future of gaming on the PlayStation 5. Uh, it's going to kick off at 1 p.m. Pacific, go for about an hour. Um, and it, the way that they're 
promotional stuff is looking, I would expect to see the controller again, but not the console or a date or a price. So I might want to align your expectations correctly uh, that this is just going to be a games focused one. It seems like it will probably be first and third party, um, which will be nice. And I guess we will <laughs> we'll roll the dice on how many gameplay videos will have gameplay this time. Um, because I am going to assume it's going to be like any other console uh, launch that not a lot. Because people wanted to give Microsoft a lot of crap about that this time, but that's been a problem for consoles for quite Ever. a while. <laughs> yeah. Since like the PS1. Like, yeah. So yeah. Uh, that'll come uh, this Thursday. Uh, and that's really it for news stories. So let's move on to our first question here jumbo jangle says it's an email titled like a boss says hey there tvgp jumbo jangles here i was eating cereal for dinner for the third time this week and thought what boss should have their very own game i think a uh, <laughs> think a game where you play a shredder and grow a progressively stronger crackdown style would be cool what are your thoughts crew have a great day jimbo hmm. <sighs> well firstly let's get down to brass tacks here sure what cereal uh, that's the important question. Uh, it was not disclosed here in the email. I know, but I need to know what cereal. Jimbo, get back in touch. I need to know what cereal. Are you a Fruit Loops man? A Monster Mash head? Lucky Charms? Uh, all Bran? Raisin Bran? Just plain old cornflakes? Lucky Hit me Charms. Up. I'm a cereal guy. <laughs> Let me know. I can uh, tell. <laughs> also, also, villains who need games? Um, to do, do Far Cry 3? Uh, definition of insanity guy. There yeah. is your ultimate answer to this question. <clears throat> I wish I could remember his name. I uh, God, I don't remember. Uh, the bad guy from Mass Effect One, Saren. Saren. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like, uh, are we side talking like a prequel thing? game where he's like part of the? Uh, he's the, like a specter, and you're doing specter games, and slowly but surely he gets turned to the dark side by the Emperor. I mean, by the Reapers. Yeah, that'd be all right. Oh, War of the Stars, the Saren story. <laughs> I still think they should do a game about the first contact wars, but... Oh, which In series Gears? are we talking about? Are we talking about Mass Gears Effect. or Mass Effect? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, what else? Um... Good boy. <sighs> Uh, Vaz is the guy's name, by the way. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to think of other villains that I care that much about. It's kind of the thing, because some of the villains that I really like, I don't want them to have games because they were just cool and badass in their own right. Mm-hmm. It's like a JRPG. It's like, I spent 65 hours chasing that bad guy like i, I know yeah. all his details i saw the flashback cutscene where he fell from grace uh, i mean the disgaea characters are all bad guys and they have their own video games i was Please actually even thinking about video disgaea, games. yeah <laughs> plays the good guys mm -hmm. donkey kong got his own video game several of his it's own true. video games most of them were good waluigi yeah there you go I, I would want to see what they would do with a Waluigi game because the Wario games were are amazing. great, and they're they're very uh, on brand for that character. Waluigi would be a weird thing. I don't know what you would make puzzle game. I want a Waluigi's Mansion where he's setting up traps for Luigi. Man, that sounds really good. So you basically want Overlord? <laughs> yes. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Waluigi, and he's ordering Goombas around, and you can get different colored Goombas, <laughs> or you can use the shell people for different types of tasks. It's perfect. Uh, uh, Nintendo. Nintendo, we're available for hire. <laughs> oh, Wal Overlord. That's right. Uh, Jimbo Jangles in the chat said, Fruity Pebbles. Okay. Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles, they're acceptable. They are acceptable. Yeah. It's a good one. Mm-hmm. I like Fruity Pebbles. They're no Lucky Charms, but I like Fruity Pebbles. 
I also like that he mentioned Crackdown here because Crackdown is probably one of the more famous games of you're, you're actually the bad guy. The bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you didn't even know you were doing it for us, Agent. Also, weirdly appropriate in May of 2020. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, I don't know if I can think of any other villains that I care about. Play, play a game as the Brumac. <laughs> I mean, the Command & Conquer games, you had campaigns with all of those villains anyway, so... Yeah, because you have your, like, the two different factions. Yeah, the G.O.D. and the Nod. Was it the G.O.D.? The G.D.D.? Yeah, the... Yeah, it was the G.O.D. It was definitely the Nod was the other one. That's because everybody knows the Nod. That's true. Or you can just get into Warhammer, where nobody is the good guy. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Uh, yeah, let's have That's a conversation true. about Space Marine, shall we, for a, a hot minute or <laughs> seven hours. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Games about the villain. Games with the villain. Grand Theft Auto, you're all villains in that. Red Dead Redemption, you're almost always the villain in that. You might redeem yourself, but you're still a villain. Tropico, you're definitely the villain. <laughs> that's tr that's true. What about um, Animal Crossing, but you play as Nook? Yeah, but oh. he's not really the villain. He doesn't charge you interest. I don't know, man. There's He's... there's a lot of backroom deals going on there. Yeah, and uh, the that's whole true. relationship between him and Sam leaves a lot to be questioned right now. Or him and Red, I should say. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you could do that, and then it would be like that store management game that Boston likes so much that I can never remember the name of. Where the road Moonlighter? Like... Yeah, Moonlighter. Yes. Uh, except yeah. you sell to a bunch of villages. Um, <laughs> and then raise interest rates. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no um, turn up sells for you. Liquid snakes right. <laughs> would be an interesting one. That would be a really good one, actually. Dude, a lot of the bosses from MGS would be interesting. Dude, could you imagine, Even... like, a. What was that game where you slid around in your knees all the time? Vanquish. Could you imagine a Vanquish, but you played as Fortune from Metal Gear with all of the bullets flying around you and never hitting you? That would be pretty cool. And then you play as the end, where it's just mm -hmm. a quick five-minute jaunt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so I guess the Command & Conquer collection is Tiberian Dawn and Red Alert. So I guess I was confused. Mm. Hmm, and it has so. all the expansions too. I looked it up as well. Yeah, yeah. Tiberian it's Dawn good. is the re the rename for the original Command and Conquer. By the way, gotcha. That's not a bad collection then. Looks pretty good. Uh, Two thumbs up. Interesting. So yeah, uh, I got nothing for villains because I usually like the villains because of the story that led them in the way that you're already shown how they're a bad guy. That's right. why I like them. I. <clears throat> Not really interested in going through their whole. Oh, this is their turning point. You're right. I already uh, next, next question here is from uh, Late Elf on Discord. Pre-internet, we saw all kinds of hints and tips materialize outside of outlets like EGM and Nintendo Power branded, unauthorized, unofficial, covering just one game like Pokemon or Metal Gear Solid or whole plethora. Game Player's Guide put out several several encyclopedia compilations in the '90s that covered the full generation of systems. The one that stuck, that most stuck out to me, and the hardest to complete the collection, I never did get them all, were the NES Game Guide VHS tapes. Six games, six tapes, and you never found them all in one place. Twenty to thirty dollars a pop in the early nineties didn't help, and I only saw them in Kmart and Meyer. Do you have a favorite non-brand, not Nintendo Power, etc., guide or tip book slash thing from a pre-Game Facts era? Yeah, it's called the Playground at your middle school. <laughs> yeah, it was all like the the geeks tales on the the playground yeah i i was always sort of interested and liked some of those like unauthorized guides that came out it's like the unauthorized guide to resident evil and like those are the ones that had they looked cheap but you looked in there and they had like the really cool looking maps it had all the secrets. Like, they usually came out a little bit after the game came out, but they usually had everything in there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know if I had any of them. Games Master, which oh might not be a brand that's recognizable over here in the in the old US. Um, yeah. But it was very much a uh, it was a multi platform magazine where it covered everything. It covered all the all the consoles, all the platforms, PC, you know, Sega Saturn, everything. It covered them all. Um, mm-hmm. And then they made a TV show based on it. That's right. Um, and the TV show is basically just like a really quick week- weekly wrap up, kind of like what Giant Bomb and Gamespot did before they actually did it on national TV. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was really solid because that was how I got my trailers. That was how I got my. I didn't get the VHS things like you got over here. I didn't go into a game store and get a VHS tape with like nine videos on it. I got right. it on Games Master on Channel Five of a Friday night. Um, That's cool. And it also had that big head-looking thing of the famous scientists. I think he was a famous scientist who literally just came on to do some voice acting, have his face captured, and get paid. That's um, great. It was really solid, and that had all of that stuff in it. It had the tip section, the cheat section. I never got the the Nintendo. We got Nintendo Official Magazine. We didn't get EGM or any of those magazines over in the UK. Right. We literally only got four or five magazines. Official Xbox, Official PlayStation, Official Nintendo, Games Master, and like Edge. Like That was pretty yeah. much it. Edge has always been really good, though. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't never really did outside of when G4 became a channel. I never really did a whole lot outside with video games with other people because I was generally the only person that was playing video games before the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It was, it was a real desert before game facts came around that that's why it was so huge is because like, Oh, every game in history has a guide here. Even if it's like the biggest or the smallest game you've ever heard. Yeah. Uh, Jimbo Jangles in chat says the magazine Tips and Tricks was essential in an era with limited or no internet. I forgot about that too. That was another one of those like, here's a bunch of walkthroughs or like, here's the hardest part of this game and here's a couple of different ways to beat it. Mm -hmm. Here's a bunch of cool passwords for the Mega Man game. Um, I was wrong about the TV channel. It was channel four and it ran from Uh. 1992 to 1998. And wow. the face that they did the go and just look it up on YouTube for some really messed up like images. Uh, the face they had on it was Sir Patrick Moore, who was a renowned astronomer. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You have Thanks. seen the image before. If you exist on the internet, <laughs> you've sure seen have. that image before. I also like that YouTube is just full of like, hey man, here's the entire run of the show. Go enjoy mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of my yeah. biggest issue was also is that I was generally still playing JRPGs even as a kid. So mm-hmm. while everyone's at the arcades playing Mortal Kombat, I'm at home playing Lunar 2, you know, right. trying to get through <laughs> Xenogears, Gears, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, last question here is from T-Bomb Rocks on Discord. He says, after finally playing through the story of uh, Mortal Kombat 11 to prepare for Aftermath, there's a part where, slight spoilers... Scorpion and Sub Zero team up and fight together. Oh. Have me wondering what unlikely duo of former enemies in video games would you like to see pair up for mischief? Well, I already got my greatest wish and I got it in anime format. Goku and Vegeta. I mean, come on. That's true. Uh, Renji, Renji and... a dad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, Renji and uh, Ichigo from Bleach. There's a really solid good team up right there as well. There you go. Hmm, let's see, video game-wise, though. Hmm. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like we're having a lot of trouble with video game enemies and bosses this week. Yeah. Uh. Why am I drawing a complete blank? Mario and Sonic that. already went to the Olympics. What else do you need? They went to the Olympics several times. That's right. Except for this year. It's only Sonic. Mario's busy launching the new theme park. Okay. So confused for a second then. N- yeah, no, it's only Sonic this year. Sonic the, at the Olympics. Mario, uh, Mario's got other stuff to do, apparently. One second, Maybe that's it. the... You What's get that? the big thing with Final Fantasy VII and Avid Children, where the Turks work with 
the main party characters, which is a pretty cool battle sequence in the movie. Mm. That's true. Yeah. That's but, really good, actually. That's really amazing. That fight that lasts like 30 minutes at the end of that movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know what the thing is? If they would just have <clears throat> Donald Duck, then they could have solved all of that problem straight away. Yeah. Screw Bahamut, just get Don- Donald Duck on the job. <laughs> That's right. Uh, um, I got nothing this week, man. These are really great questions that I'm just... My brain is just like, yeah, let's think about that. Okay. How about Duke Nukem and the Pig Cops? <laughs> sure. Uh, how about Alien and Predator versus Marines? Mm, that's right. No alien on alien violence here, folks. Just alien A versus plus human. P. Yeah, <laughs> A plus P equals H- A HD. ampersand P. You gotta yeah. make it fancy. <laughs> uh, do I mean, the thing is, you've got to go for the classic rivalries, and the only problem is those classic rivalries only really exist in fighting games. And let's face it, Ryu and Ken team up all the time. Right. Or, like, stuff like uh, Sonic and Dr. Robotnik. Like, that's been a rivalry for quite a while, but they had to have teamed up together at some point. Yeah, go check out the comics, I'm sure, to find an answer to that problem. Oh, Sonic yeah. and Knuckles is a good example. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, lock on. Lock on together. Mm-hmm. Wait. Is it lock on or is it docking? Uh, we we need to check our phrasing I... right now. <laughs> the Putting one cartridge inside of another is lock on. I know. <laughs> docking is elite dangerous. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> well, I haven't... I haven't installed that problem of a game, so no, I'm not entirely oh, sure. Oh, wow. Jimbo and chat. Leisure Suit Larry and Lara Croft. They're not old rivals. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of are. I mean, unless you're saying Leisure Suit Larry is a rival to all women, then I well, guess. Yes, That's true, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Queen Mira and Marcus Phoenix. There you go. Oh, man, yeah. The ultimate end of all times team up. That's right. When stuff is really getting real. Oh, I figured it out. I know the perfect one. Plants and zombies versus humans. <laughs> Problem solved. Perfect. I love it. Flip the script. Yep. Oh, man. It's like the Walking right, well, that's Dead our episode with, for... with the mist or whatever that movie was. The silence. Yeah, I can't remember. Right. It's so bad I don't even know the name. Well, on that note, that's our episode for this week. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. <laughs> if you'd like to visit us, you can do so at tvgp.tv. Everyone will find and follow us on the right-hand side of the page. Uh, don't forget to join our Discord. Uh, everyone is welcome super cool community uh, patreon.com slash e1m1 ones or numbers uh, as we said before the five dollars here is the recommended one uh, uh, critical miss is turning out really well so catch that early on season one is still underway right now uh, game club game um, <laughs> we bought uh, vampire the masquerade bloodlines and good old games for virtually nothing and the uh, fan patch is free uh, so go Check that out and check out, uh, you too can experience whatever Moonpeer is talking about that I still have ahead of me that's super dark. Dude, it's uh, so bad. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. So we'll see you all next week. Bye. 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 Uh, <laughs> bye. uh all right, Nymph. Hit me with your titles. Okay. I have Vampire Cheerleader. (laughs) Yay for working on Saturday. I might have done something stupid, which seems kind of (laughs) long. The penny dropped. Get ready, Tenos. (laughs) I hate games. Murderizing the Sea. Get good and A ampersand P. <laughs> Moon, what do you have? Uh, witness me. Real mm-hmm. south, real fast. What is Firewatch? <laughs> Get ready, Tenos. Mistakes were made. Cyril figures. <laughs> Three seashells. 
Oh my god. I both it. Call eight year old scrubs. <laughs> uh, mobile scrub watch. NHS hospital. And I'm a serial guy. Which again makes me sound like a killer. I mean, it's all in the, it's all in the marketing. Yeah. Uh, I have. I didn't want to know more. Uh, two weeks and a Saturday. Uh, I'm a serial guy. Uh, get ready, Tenos, A, Ampersand, P, and Mobile Scrub Watch. And Jimbo Jangles says, I know it's an instant veto, but show title, we all have different size packages. <laughs> yes, uh, but also really good. Yes and yes. <laughs> yeah. I, he also threw out leveled up my maces to 30. Mm, that was a good one, but a little wordy. Yeah. Um, I checked... I'm a serial guy and get ready tenos. I also like mobile scrub watch, but maybe not as much as the other yeah. two. I like it get sounds, ready tenos. It sounds like an advertisement for ShamWow. Mobile scrub watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get ready tenos is fine. How do you spell tenos? Let's make uh, sure I have that right. I think it's T E N N O S. Yeah. Okay. I'm Googling it too. You're fine. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Uh, get ready, tenos. Yeah, T E N N O right. apostrophe S. Oh, okay. Also, fun fact because it's plural. Um, fun fact: the Tenno is actually the emperor of Japan. I did not oh. know that. I learned something today. Interesting. T I L Tenno equals emperor of Japan. <laughs> you know, years of anime have taught me a lot. That's right. Yeah, anime and visual of, novels. Years of diverse anime have taught you a lot. I watch the exact yeah, same crap over and over and over again. <laughs> uh, all right, let me know when you guys are ready. I'm uh, ready. I got nothing but this. Let's, let's Shockingly. Go. Whatever. Ride the whip. Woo! <laughs> There's your, there you go. Just steal that one. <laughs> all right, starting in three, two... One, this is that video game podcast episode six fifty eight for June first, twenty twenty. Get ready, tenos. Slide, slide, jump, jump, dash, dash, slash, slash, die, die, slide, slide, jump, jump, ground pound. Operator, the system is in need of you. <laughs> All right, <laughs> thank you very much, everyone, oh, that's for watching good. and listening. We love you all. We'll see you next week. Bye. See you, folks. <laughs> Bye. And we can stop recording.